Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Mr. Woody Has, your online math teacher. In today's video, you will learn geometric sequences. Let's start. Geometric sequence, it is a sequence in which each term is obtained by multiplying the preceding term by a common multiplier called the common ratio. For example, the sequence 2, 10, 50, 250, and so on is a geometric sequence whose first term is 2 and the second term is found by multiplying the first term by 5. 2 times 5 is 10 and the third term is is obtained by multiplying the second term by 5. 10 times 5 is 50 and 50 times 5 is 250 and so on. This common multiplier which is 5 is what they call the common ratio. A common ratio is a constant term multiplied to every term of a geometric sequence to get the next term. This common ratio is found by dividing any term except the first by the previous term. For example, to find the common ratio in the geometric sequence 2, 6, 18, 54, and so on, divide any term except the 2, which is the first term, by the previous term. We have 6 divided by 2 is 3. 18 divided by the previous term, which is 6, is 3 and 54 divided by 18 is 3. This common quotient we have 3 is what they call the common ratio. Finite geometric sequence. It is a geometric sequence whose number of terms is finite. When you say finite, it is countable or we can count the number of terms. For example, the sequence 3, 12, 48, 192, 768, 3072 is a finite geometric sequence since the number of terms here is 6. The first term is 3 while the last term is 3072. So we can consider a sequence is geometric if there is a last term or if we can identify the last term. Next is infinite geometric sequence. It is a geometric sequence whose number of terms is not finite or we cannot count the number of terms. The symbol ellipsis is used to denote that the sequence has more terms. For example, the sequence 1, 4, 16, 64, and so on is an infinite geometric sequence whose first term is 1 and the common ratio is 4. We, can, we cannot identify the last term since there is no last term here. It goes infinity. And that is infinite geometric sequence. To find the nth term of a geometric sequence, we will be using the formula a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times the common ratio to the power of n minus 1. Now let's try some examples about geometric sequences. Which of the following sequences are geometric sequences? Is it A, B, or C? To identify which are geometric sequence here from the choices, we'll divide each of their terms by the previous term, then see if there is a common ratio. The first sequence, 5, 8, 11, 14, and so on, has no common ratio because 8 divided by 5 is equal to 1.6, 11 divided by 8 is 1.375, 14 divided by 11 is approximately 1.27. There is no common ratio here. Therefore, this is not a geometric sequence. Similarly, the last sequence, 2, 9, 16, 25, and so on, has no common ratio also because 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. 16 divided by 9 is is approximately 1.78 and 25 divided by 16 is equal to 
1.5625. There is no common number here, therefore, this is not a geometric sequence. However, notice that the second sequence given has a common ratio. The, go, uh, the given geometric sequence there is 10, 20, 40, 80, and so on. So let's try if there is really common. 20 divided by 10, that's e, that is 2. 40 divided by 20 is also 2. 80 divided by 40 is also 2. The common ratio of the sequence is 2. Therefore, this given sequence is a geometric sequence. Example number two, Aiko listed a geometric sequence in her paper. The first term is 10, while the last term is 5 over 32. How many numbers did she write if she multiplied one half by every term to get the next term? Based on the problem, the first term or a sub 1 is equal to 10. The last term, or a sub n, is equal to 5 over 32, and the common ratio is equal to 1 half. Therefore, we are looking for the value of n, or the number of terms. We'll substitute these necessary values to our formula. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times the common ratio to the power of n minus 1. Since the value of a sub n is 5 over 32, we change it to 5 over 32. Then for a sub 1 is 10, and for the common ratio is 1 half. And we have there n minus 1 since we are to find the number of terms. Now let's solve the equation. Since the unknown variable is in the exponent, we must find a way that both sides must be of exponential form and they must have the same basis. The base here is one half and we must also have one half here as the base. But before that, let's multiply first both sides by one over 10 so that we can cancel this 10 here. For this side, 10, times 1 over 10, that is just 1, then multiply it by 1 half to the power of n minus 1. That is why we have 1 half to the power of n minus 1 here. And this 1 over 10 will be multiplied also to the other side, which is 5 times 32, and we get 1 over 64. Now this time, we will make this side here as an exponential form and the base should be one half. This one over 64 is just equal to one over six or one over two rather to the power of six. If you are going to simplify one half to the power of six, that is just the same as one over 64. Now this time, they have already the same basis and we can now solve for the exponent or the, var uh, the unknown variable rather. So just ignore this one half here, focus on the exponent since they have the same base already. So just copy six, then n minus one here. We have now six is equal to n minus one, then solve for n, just transpose this negative 1 to the other side, it becomes positive 1. So you have 6 plus 1, which is equal to 7. And that is the value of n or the number of terms. Therefore, I could listed 7 numbers. To check if you really understand the discussion, try to answer this individual practice and Please comment your answer below so that I can check also if you really understand the discussion. That's all for today's topic. Thank you for watching.